welcome to Am Writing Fantasy. I'm Jesper, and uh, together with Autumn, I run this channel, and we try to share writing, publishing, and marketing tips every single Monday for you. But today, I actually uh, have one of our Patreon supporters on here too, and we're going to talk some some very important stuff about uh, Facebook marketing, which is uh, very very relevant if you want to to sell some books. Uh, and of course, I should also mention that if you want to uh, check out the uh, Patreon, then you can go there and check out uh, the, the stuff that we offer. There is a ton of uh, rewards that you can get for just a one dollar. For example, you're going to get a bookmark. You're going to get um, uh, early access to the videos. Uh, there is actually a course that you're going to get access to for for uh, for a reduced uh, price. So all that uh, is possible by Patreon. So check out the link uh, below if you're interested in that. But uh, I want to uh, say uh, hello to Bill and thank you, Bill, for joining at a very late hour on the other side of the Atlantic. But we want to say uh, say hi to everybody. Hi there. So um, yeah, uh, thanks for the introduction, Jesper. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've just started fiction writing myself, uh, but uh, my experience. Has mostly my day job, if you want to call it that, is uh, mostly with uh, Facebook marketing and uh, a few other types of marketing that go along with that. So um, I figured that I could uh, maybe help some people out who are new to Facebook marketing or perhaps don't have the um, sort of the background that I do with it. Um, I lost count somewhere um, after 10,000. Facebook ads run for me and uh, for clients as well. Uh, so the, there's, we've done a lot of ads over the last few years, <laughs> and we've seen the platform evolve. Um, a, a long time ago, I don't think I was on it the, maybe the first year, um, but uh, I've seen it evolve from something that sort of barely functioned to uh, uh, a, a, a terrifying machine now so yeah yeah, yeah and, I, I, and when you sort of uh, talked about the idea of, of us discussing Facebook ads I, I thought it was a good idea because especially with Facebook it's it, they are so incredibly good at taking your money it's it's crazy you know some marketing platforms uh, like Amazon ads for example they it's very hard to to get them to take your money actually but whatever you do with Facebook they will take all of your budget no problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, knowing how to what to think about and how to go about it uh, is important, at least to, uh, when you're also from a testing perspective, so that you don't end up spending all your money. So I was looking forward to this uh, conversation here, Bill. Okay. Uh, well, I can give you a few tips based on that idea. Um, first, you mentioned testing, and uh, that's something I I think sometimes we're lucky. Uh, sometimes we make assumptions about what the audience likes and get it right. Um, but in my experience, even knowing a lot about a particular market, that usually happens at best one in five. You're going to have to run many ads or do many posts if you're working purely on your, your Facebook page uh, before you'll find one that hits. And of course, uh, we all want the first thing that we to, to work, but it doesn't usually work out that way. So that's the first thing that I run into with clients when I'm talking to them is uh, they want the first, they make an assumption about their audience and the, when we do some proper testing, it just isn't true. <laughs> we, we want our audience to be certain people, but it turns out there's different people who are interested in our product and that's okay. Um, the, the job from a marketing perspective is to figure out who those people are, what they like, and to give them more of what they like in a way that gets them to give something back to us, right? Um, I guess one way that I like to look at it is very similar to plotting a book, uh, even a short story. You want that hook, you catch their attention and get guide them to an idea, a concept, whatever. Um, whatever it is that your post or your ad is trying to do and then you give them no option but to move on to the next thing whatever that might be now most often um we want them uh, you know the, the bottom line is important we want them to buy and uh, so i also have clients who if they don't have something ready to sell right now they well i'll do facebook later 
I don't have anything to sell, so why would I, you know, want to put anything up there? Um, but you can start testing before you have uh, a, a book that's uh, on sale on Amazon or or another platform. Um, you can start building your audience, building your platform, and especially getting those key people from Facebook uh, who like the style of your writing. Uh, maybe because they've seen little snippets, you can post a short story or a, a chapter, even a paragraph sometimes, and get a reaction. Um, Facebook is very visual, so it also helps if you have something like a, it can be an illustration, but especially with first time authors, paying for illustrations, if you're not doing them yourself, that gets kind of expensive. Uh, but everybody needs a cover. And uh, so you can do uh, the full cover, you can do um, parts of the cover. Uh, if it's a complex image, maybe you can work with your designer, your artist, um, so that the cover is interesting in different ways and you can crop it several ways to post on Facebook. And all of those things can be done over and over. Um, so that's another misconception that I run into quite a lot with clients who haven't uh, used Facebook quite as uh, hard as I have. And that is that uh, you'll have some people in your audience who will see the same things a couple of times, but they don't normally complain. Um, so it pays to post many times, not spamming your page or other people's page or group or whatever. Um, but if you post something Monday morning and uh, the people who you're trying to reach, only some of them are paying attention Monday morning, by the time you're, you've posted a few more things and Thursday or Friday rolls around, it's fine to post a similar thing again, introduce it in a slightly different way if you want to test that, because another different batch of people will see it. And the bigger your audience grows, the more uh, the, 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 the more sort of spread out their attention will be, mm. uh, right? So you might be lucky and you'll have uh, this core audience who just uh, waits and, and continually refreshes Facebook on your page, but that's unrealistic uh, for the most, most of us are not there yet. Right? Um, so don't feel bad about reposting the same thing. Obviously if it's, you know, I don't know, a Christmas or Halloween post or something like that, then that, that's, that dictates when you can post it. Um, the other thing that uh, audiences tend to like is if uh, you, uh, I think in most of the markets that I work with, it, it works where you do something at least once a week uh, that is uh, themed somehow. So for example, I have a client who has uh, some dog products and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, the, the cute cat and cute dog pictures really work on Facebook. Um, so we have, uh, you know, dogs with their tongues hanging out and we get users, we invite users to contribute their pictures on Tongue, tongue Out Tuesday. Right, so <laughs> Tuesday is the day for this, and uh, we don't make a big deal about it. And uh, even so, we get a lot of engagement. Cool. And uh, now that's that's kind of a, a silly thing, but Facebook is full of that, uh, and uh, it may not be appropriate for you know high fantasy or uh, some kind of grim dark literature or whatever. Uh, but you can always find something that appeals to your audience that way, and uh, invite them to respond. Mm. And the response yeah. is, that you, yeah, like, you, you know how this works, especially because I, I know you're good with Twitter, right, Jesper? Mm -hmm. the, the responses that you can bring teach you about your audience, but it also, on Facebook, teaches Facebook about your audience. And uh, the better your interaction with your audience, the better um, Facebook will understand who likes your stuff and it'll show more to their friends and, and their friends' friends. Yeah. So I, so I wanted to ask, so if, if we, when we're talking about, well, organic reach, which is sort of what, what we're into here rather than, than paid ads. Uh, yeah. But, but I think also, well, of course users could, if they want to, they could go in and they could say, okay, from uh, post from this page, I always want to see them, for example, and then Facebook would show it to them. But I think 99% of people, either don't know how to do that or don't do it at all, which means that from an organic reach point of view with Facebook, it, it is very, very limited who actually sees your posts. 
So from that perspective, of course, it makes sense that you can post it several times because they won't see it anyway. But but I was more thinking, do you have any thoughts around how, how, how if any way, can you increase your organic reach, reach without paying for it? Because at least the way I see Facebook, and maybe, maybe you can educate me here, but at least the way I see it, unless you put some money into the pot, forget about it. Generally, that's true. There are some pretty nifty ways, but most of the ways that I use to, to do exactly that, uh, people like to call it free organic traffic, but it's not really free. If you, you're basically swapping um, money for, for effort and, and a little bit of time. Um, so posting a little bit more frequently than you figure is, is one method. Uh, but if nobody notices you at first, then that does, you can post as much as you want. And it's just a roll of the dice, whether Facebook detects that and decides to share it in the right spot. So one way is to uh, share, um, join and share uh, in groups. So find the related groups. Uh, and you can, as long as the, depending on the rules of the group, be very careful with that and courteous, <laughs> of course, right? But uh, it's perfectly fine to share related content in the group. And uh, as long as it's not buy my book all the time, uh, then that, that's, that's perfectly fine. And there's lots of groups out there for just about every genre. Um, so that that is one method that does work to begin kindling your, your audience. Um, but we should move on to Facebook ads because you're right. You do, at, if you if you want it to go fast, um, you do want to spend a little bit on Facebook ads, but you don't want to spend too much. Um, so taking that concept, well, the two concepts that I mentioned earlier about making your each ad, sorry, each post on your page, sort of like um, a story hook, the same thing applies with ads because at their core on Facebook, all an ad is, is you're chipping in some money to make sure that they show it to perhaps the best, you hope, of, of the target uh, audience that you pick. So you target a, uh, the audience that you think would be interested in your topic, and uh, then you hopefully will get enough eyes on it and, and uh, have, have good enough content. Um, now I've mentioned, I'm hedging a little bit, right? I'm saying hopefully and maybe and that kind of thing. And that's because just like with posts, you don't necessarily know exactly what's going to trigger your audience to do the things that you want. And if that's coming over to your website to see your website or join your email list, there's, there's lots of things in play. But just keep in mind that even a tiny Facebook ad, that is a, a low budget Facebook ad, will get in front of some people. So if you're running the ad and uh, you just watch your budget, knowing that you're going to spend it at the beginning and, and realizing that not most ads are not failures. Even if you, you uh, uh, don't get the result that you want, don't delete your ad, don't edit the ad ever. So my, my rule is, uh, and that's the reason that my ad accounts, I've had to go to Facebook. I've had so many ads build up and so many ad campaigns build up that I've had to go to Facebook that I, and tell them, I'm sorry, I hit a limit in my account. Please allow me to create some more campaigns. And that's because all of the money that you're spending uh, on these little ads to test different ideas and different posts and, and different links, that kind of thing, those are data. Now, if that data says, don't do this, your audience doesn't like it, you need to keep that because there's there's no simple way to note all that down. So my policy is I never edit an ad. I'll create an ad and I'll let it run. And if I don't like the performance, then I'll terminate it. Um, I might let Facebook terminate it because you can set rules. That's We're not going to go into too much detail on that today. But if the ad doesn't work, it's still data. And that data could be as simple as oh, I spent 5 or $10 to learn not to do that thing again. Mm -hmm. right? So always go into it with this positive attitude of, yes, I, uh, you know, I, I have to spend a few dollars and uh, I've set a budget limit. But at the end of the day, you're going to at least get the data out of it and uh, hopefully also some good results, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that the testing part is really important, you know, when, when if you wanna, 
uh, try some Facebook ads. Uh, you know, I, I would also say the same thing as you're saying, Bill. You know, start several different tests on a very low budget, and then start learning what it is that that actually triggers with your audience. Because a lot of times, also from from let's say the pictures that you use for the ad or whatever. Sometimes the picture that you think will perform the best is probably the worst one. And sometimes the, the one that you think this doesn't look very good at all, people just pick up on it for whatever strange reason. But, but I, I think personally, uh, I've also run a lot of Facebook uh, over the last few uh, Facebook ads over the last few years. And at least I, I think my big two, two takeaways from it is that if at least, well, right now in this context, we're talking about uh, advertising for book sales. Um, and, and at least my experience with it is that um, the audience selection is probably the biggest factor as to whether or not the Facebook ad performs because you, you can tweak uh, with new pictures, a bit of different ad text and all of that. But if the audience selection is not right, then those small tweaks over there will only move the needle so little. Whereas if you change the audience and, and try a different audience, then that's where you can really make a jump. So, so that's where you should focus first, in my experience, if, if the ad is not performing for you. And then the other thing I would say, and I, I don't know, uh, you, you, well, with all your 10,000 ads, you probably have more, let's say, volume of data to, to, to know if what I'm about to say is true or not. But at least from the, from the advertising that I've run, it seems very much to me that it also depends a lot uh, on the book itself. There, there's, for some reason, some books, are just easier sales, whereas other books are much harder to find the right audience for and, and to, to get the sales going. Uh, for some reason, I, I don't know why that is, but it just seems to me like the, the book itself just matters a lot. Yes, um, especially on the Facebook side. So unless you're, uh, there are some complex setups I've seen people try where they can sell right inside a tab of their Facebook page, but we're not going to cover anything like that. That's, I don't even recommend that for book sales. But um, if if the goal of your ad is to build your page up, right, build engagement, build likes, then you'll still need an image. And you're still right, uh, regardless of the book, um, building that page up will rely a great deal on the title and the, the image. Um, but just the same as you were saying, uh, the, the the likelihood of getting people to um, engage with an ad to bring them over to a website um, and then buy your book. Uh, it, it depends on how your marketing funnel works. But um, in my experience, the best way to, to tackle that, Facebook attention span is like a people have a, the attention span of a mosquito on Facebook. Right? <laughs> so I, I want to get them off Facebook even if they're on their phone, get them off Facebook and over to a site that I control, um, at least onto a web page that I control, and then I can slow the pace down in an acceptable way. Um, I don't want them to bounce away, so I want to give them something to anticipate on the Facebook ad, on the post, or the, whatever that I'm advertising, and then I get them over to, to click the link and, and over to the website. And at that point, I'll slow things down a little bit and give them more information. So you're giving them a little bit more each time. And again, it's very similar to writing a story. Um, you can't tell them the whole detail of the first chapter in that first sentence. The first sentence has to tease them, bring them into the chapter. That is like bringing them over to the, 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 the website. And at that point, you can start giving them a little bit more information about the book. Um, that page, that landing page, um, I consider that a, a nice filter. Now, we're kind of getting away a little bit from the Facebook ad itself, because once they're onto your website, that is a, a different set of things. Yeah, the, the key and, yeah Facebook, job, you could say, right? At that right, the, the, the key with the Facebook ads is to get them over to your, your website in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some other kinds of ads. And again, we won't go into the technical details right now. We can touch on that another time if you really want. But um, if you uh, if you do have your own website, your author website, and you have a nice, clear, clean description of the book, uh, and make sure that it's you know it's ready to sell at that point, um, or if you're trying to get them to do something else on your website, like sign up to a mailing list, that's okay too. But recognize what your goal is and make sure that that's ready to go. Run your ad and get the people over there. And that landing page is much like a filter. Um, 
you want to get as many people to buy your book as possible. You want as many people to sign up to your list as possible, but not if those people are going to hate the book enough to try and return it or leave a bad review, or not if people are going to sign up to your email list and get confused and then angry, uh, and, and then you've maybe paid some fees that you didn't have to. So that page, that landing page is a positive. It's the mm -hmm. open part of the funnel, but it's also uh, a bit of a, a negative, a filter to maybe weed out the people who probably shouldn't be there and you can maybe find something else to give them. If, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think an, another thing that might be good to touch upon in, in, <clears throat> in the context of, of what we're talking about here is um, be, because in general, uh, or at least a lot of the time, I hear authors say, well, I don't really do Facebook ads because one, they are way too expensive and two, I never get anything in returns of uh, return of on investment of, of the money that I'm spending there. So it's useless and I don't want to do it. Uh, and and that's fine. But but I think at least and maybe you can sort of uh, pick this ball up and run with it if you want. But but my thinking is that a lot of the time what it comes down to is that because Facebook, it, well, as you as you were just explaining, uh, Bill, so you have people on Facebook and you need to take them off of Facebook to do something else. In the middle of the day, they're sitting there going through their feed, looking at cat pictures and all of that good stuff or pictures of their family. They're not quite in their frame of mind that I'm, I'm here to buy a book like they would be right. if they were on Amazon. So you, you need to, first of all, disrupt them and you need to make them go somewhere else. And then they need to take another action over there. So it's quite a journey. And, it, and because of that, it just requires a lot of testing to find the right both uh, ad copies and landing page copy and uh, the right audience selections and all of that stuff takes a lot of testing. And the problem mm -hmm. I think is that people usually abandon the Facebook ads way before they get enough data to actually figure out what works. So, so you, you sort of have to stick with it and, and, and keep testing. Yeah, I, I'll give you some really quick tips to make this all sort of come together a little bit because uh, the first thing is you can re you can spend as much as you want on a Facebook ad, but you can wreck it if you give them too much, right? So if, if they see the ad, um, a perfect thing to do, avoid, do your very best to avoid asking a question in a Facebook ad because it's Facebook. And like you say, people are on there commenting on stuff all the time. And it's so easy, their system is very good at this. You, if you ask someone a question, even imply a question on Facebook, they're going to answer it. That will be the action that you get. So if you're running an engagement ad, the engagement that you're going to get by asking or implying a question is an answer. And so Facebook will say, ah, very good. I will give, I'll show your ad to these people who are very likely to respond. And I notice a lot of these people are commenting. Here's my list of top commenters from your selected audience, and that's who will see your ad. And it will get progressively more like that the longer that ad runs. Facebook's AI will learn that your engagement from that post drives comments. So don't ask a question. Give them a reason to go over to your site, but also avoid anything that will prevent them from going to the site. Mm. So don't answer everything. Keep some curiosity in their mind. Right? But don't ask them a question or try and get them to do too many things. I've seen um, failed ads that uh, amounted to, well, I'm, I'm spending $5 a day on my ad, so I have to get them to do as much as possible. And so I'll ask them to like the page and I'll ask them to comment and I'll ask them to go over to the website. They're only going to do one thing. right? I, in great ads, they will go over to your website and they might come back and like and share and all of that stuff. But if you ask them to do many things, they will probably do none, right? So mm -hmm. that, or, or if they do something, it will be the easiest. And people on Facebook don't see clicking through to some other website as easy. They see clicking like or share as easy, right? So yeah. uh, that, that that's the way to make the ad great. Even if your targeting is so-so, even if you're not spending a lot, make sure that the ad tells them to do one thing and don't be afraid to tell them either command them almost to do the thing you want them to do um, and make it super clear because those cat videos will you know have them dizzy at some point you know? <laughs> totally. um, as far as as far as budgeting and back to what you were saying about testing a lot um, 
I would say 90% of those 10,000 ads are $5 a day and they run for two to three days. On a new ad account that hasn't run a lot, Facebook AI takes a little bit of time to get up to speed and uh, dial in. Um, if you've run multi-day ads, so the same ad untouched running several days, you'll often see that its performance is sort of wavers the first day or so, and then it stabilizes. It might stabilize exactly where you want it, or it might stabilize less than that, and then you'll, you'll kill it. But you have to give it a little bit of time. On the biggest accounts that I've worked on, that time is really narrowed down to about six hours. So I can run a $5 ad, $5 a day ad uh, for about six hours. And, and generally, it depends on the ad and the audience, but generally we'll have Facebook understanding what we want within six or so hours. But yeah. more, more typically, you want to let it run for at least two full days before you kill it because you don't know if it's wavering on that first day, especially if you launch it late in the calendar day. Facebook does this funny thing at midnight in your ad accounts local time where they just sort of chuck out some of the data and then they relearn to see if they didn't maybe get it right the day before. Mm -hmm. And so if you run the ad after several days and you don't like the results coming in, you know, in the beginning of the next morning and you kill the ad, you could be killing it too early. So go into it knowing that. But I, even after I have a great ad, I'm very reluctant unless the audience is absolutely enormous, like over 5 million people potentially in the audience. I usually like to leave the ad at $5 a day. And if I want to scale it, if it's doing really what I want, I make another ad exactly the same. Facebook has really easy tools to just duplicate the ad, actually the ad campaign, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I will run two $5 a day ads and they could be exactly the same and they may perform almost the same. Usually they do. Um, that's the measure of a good ad that will last a long time with good performance is the duplicate of it will uh, perform very similar to the first one. It'll have that initial uh, day or so that feels like a little bit of a waste of money letting it learn. But having those stable ads means that it's very easy to scale. You just pause one of the ads if you want to stop spending the money. It's very yeah, easy. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I, I, because this is about the patient thing again. <laughs> because I, I usually say, you know, when when you create an ad, let it at least run for forty eight hours before you even look at at the stats or anything. Because people do also tend to like two hours after they created it, then they'll go in and have a look at the stats and say, oh no, this is terrible. And, yeah. and refresh, then, refresh, uh, refresh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I even think that the ads manager now, actually, they have added this label where it says something about that the ad is still learning or something, which right. they didn't yeah. use to. That helps a bit, of course, to to sort of indicate just let it let it be alone uh, or let leave it alone. Uh, what I was about to say, but so so that's that's one of the patients thing. And then the other side of it, uh, which you just touched a bit on there, was. Uh, when you have the positive results uh, so let's say you now waited 48 hours and whoa this is good you know and then some people will join uh, jump in and then they will just triple or quadruple the um, the budget on the ad yep. and then that pretty much destroys it as well i can explain exactly why that is and i've had this confirmed in talks with the facebook uh staff uh sort of mid mid-level staff is as far as I've ever got to uh, speak with. Uh, no matter how much you spend there, you probably don't get much above that. But their system is fairly clever. You tell it the parameters of the audience that you want to show to. You want people who are, you know, maybe women between the age of, let's say, 18 and above, because you know that they have a credit card or something like that. But over 36, you probably don't want them in your market. You've dialed all of this in through a little bit of testing. So you have 18 to 36 women in the United States who like these things. And so you have your, your what you think is your perfect audience. And uh, then you tell Facebook, here's my audience, here's my ad. Give me all the people in this audience who are most likely to engage with my ad, who are going to click on my ad and to do whatever it is. So if it's a if it's a page post engagement ad or whatever they're calling them these days, um, to, to click through to my website, then I want the people who are most likely to do that. Now, 
Facebook organizes that. And it's a dynamic thing because people are logging on and off all the time. People are seeing different ads. So their ads fill up ahead of yours and it's a big auction system. And it's a, what's important is Facebook is constantly prioritizing that list of all of those people who might potentially fit your audience parameters. And if you take $5 and spend down through the, the cream of the crop, the top, people who are most likely to engage in the way that you want, you'll still be in that top tiny margin. If you spend $100 on the same ad, it's going to go through those top people and it's going to keep on going and going and going until the results get worse. And so that's why often you'll see ads with big budgets run poorer the longer they run through the day. And early in the morning, they may look like they're doing fine. So that that is the logic behind doing lots of very similar, perhaps you, you can test, but, uh, but small ads. So if I wanted to run hundred dollars a day, I can tell you it would be on 20 ads, not on one ad with hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I think you, you can scale up to, to higher budget, but you just need to be careful. You know, you, a small incremental step up in the budget you can do because then the, the AI sort of, well, you work with the AR and let it catch up every time you increase rather than a big jump all of a sudden. I, I think that's how it works. But Absolutely. I'm not an expert in the in Facebook AI, but I think that's how it works. Yes. And the bigger your audience, the, we'll, we'll maybe leave the audience size and, and so on really to another time, but there's a lot of detail in that. But the bigger your audience, the more tolerant it will be, the system will be of uh, you're changing the budget. So mm -hmm. if I have a 10 or 11 million audience, something like that, um, I can probably boost that up to 10 or $20 a day and it won't really affect performance very much if it's a good ad. Um, but if my audience is more like 500,000 or less, uh, maybe in the tens of thousands, um, $5 is the most I will be able to successfully spend um, anything more than that. And it will, it will just start costing me more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we also sort of coming a bit up on time here, but, um, but, uh, and I, I'm thinking that, well, at least we talked a bit about if you're just getting into Facebook ads that, that you should uh, try to run many tests and you should be patient and you should use a low budget. And, and, and sort of learn from, from what you see and the data that, that comes from that. So we talked a sort of that about uh, for the beginner, um, but I, I also think that probably the majority of the stuff we talked about is a bit more for people who are already slightly experienced because otherwise there will be a lot of the stuff we talked about that they won't even know what that means. But I, I don't know if, if, would there be any final sort of good inputs to if somebody is just completely like I, I never run any Facebook ad and it's fine that you're telling me that I should be patient and I should use a low budget and do testing but where do I start is there anything we could say to those people um, Facebook's training their own instructions are pretty good these days so that used to not be the case their training used to be the last thing that I would direct you to but now it's not too bad to get onto their system and get started but keep in mind, they have this idea that everyone who uses Facebook ads is Coca-Cola with a massive marketing right. budget and, and they're only going to be interested in branding. Branding is interesting for an author, but for indie authors, stick with the idea of picking one goal. And normally there's only two that I pay attention to on Facebook for this kind of business. One is getting more people more fans, right? People to like your page, but I don't even worry too much about that. So very quickly, I would stop, stop with the like ads after I have say a few hundred people and I would let that build organically naturally by posting. And then the second type of ad that you'll be running from as, as soon as you're successful, you'll want to run them all the time. And that's the engagement style ad where you create a post on your page or in the ad, it'll look just like a, a page post. And that is designed to get people over to your website. And so those are the those are the takeaways to, to extract from the Facebook training. And uh, what else? Make sure the image is striking. The, the process of an ad or of a post, but an ad really, is people notice the image first, almost always. Very few people read the headline and then see the image. It's normally the image interrupts them, just like Esper said, then they might read the title or they might read the intro, 
So don't skip those things. Make them interesting and don't let them, don't give people any excuse to not click. The image interested them, now give them a reason to go over to your website. So that that is probably the, those, those are probably the quick tips that will make things most successful for new people. And hopefully for those people who tried Facebook ads and got discouraged and went away that bring them back because it's a great tool. Mm. Yeah, I mean, at least from a, let's say, audience targeting perspective, you do not get any marketing tool in the world right now at the time of recording this that can target so specifically as Facebook can. It's amazingly uh, well in doing that. And then you, but again, it, it, and, it, and the ads manager is not that easy either. So it's, it's a bit complicated. You need to sort of get used to it and, and understand what is the different terms that I'm selecting here and there. And, and then I guess, yeah, you can, you can use those uh, Facebook tutorial videos at least to get you a bit acquainted with what's going on there. But, but it's not easy and it takes a bit of patience and time, but, but, but right. it can work and you, you can get there if, if you want to. Um, we probably, if, if we're going to wrap it up, then we yeah. won't cover additional topics, but uh, keep in mind that once you get them off that platform, remember the work and the effort that it took to get them there and treat them with respect. Don't get them onto an email list that you never send an email to, right? Jesper, Jesper knows all about this, right? Once you have them on the email list, use the email list to communicate with them and get feedback from them and then generate sales. It's not just a, a quick, uh, now you're mine on the, the email list and and uh, you know you sell them something and it doesn't work so you never send them uh, an email again it's a process right? yeah indeed indeed yeah and, and if, if you want to learn a lot more about emails and email marketing and uh, having them well over the last three weeks or something like that uh, autumn and I released several videos about email marketing and how to do it how to get it set up what you should be emailing people about and how to get them onto the email. We talked about all of that. So just go back to some of the past episodes here from the last three weeks and and, and you can check that all of that out and, and learn much more. So, But I wanted to thank you, thank you uh, Bill, for coming on and talking about Facebook ads. I, I think it is an, well, I wouldn't say underutilized because there are people who spend a lot of money on Facebook ads in general, but at least in the author community, I, I think more people give up on them than, than actually leverage the power that they could be. Um, but is it easy? I would say no. Uh, it requires both some time testing and it also requires some money, but but it, it can be made to work. But at least as I also explained through this video, to me, at least from my personal experience, it also depends on the type of book that I'm advertising. There are some of my books I just don't advertise because I've tested it a million different ways and I cannot get it to work on Facebook. So maybe Facebook is just a wrong medium for that particular book. And then I advertise them elsewhere. Uh, and then there are other books that actually works quite well with the Facebook ads. So, so it, yeah, you test, that's all I can say. Absolutely. All right. Is there anything you want to share where people can learn more about you, Bill, or something like that? Sure. Um, if you're interested, if you're if you're an author and you're interested uh, in what we talked about, then you maybe are, are you want my help or advice or whatever. Um, that might be something that I can arrange, and you can uh, contact me easily through the contact form or just email contact at my website, which is novelprizes.com. We didn't get to talk about contest marketing and multi-channel marketing and other stuff that I really enjoy today. Um, but uh, that's uh, one of my my test bases is uh, novelprizes.com. And you, the, you can just use the contact form there to, to reach out to me if you want. Perfect, yeah. And if you email me the link as well, uh, Bill, sure. then I will add it uh, for people to find in the in the description and the show notes. Uh, so okay. thanks a lot for joining us today, uh, Bill. I appreciate it. Right on. Thanks very much for the opportunity.